bio quiz on Tuesday, if I'm not wrong, isn't it, ladies? We have it scheduled on Tuesday, I believe. Well, that will be the last bio quiz, inshallah. And also, please complete your MLG assignments. And uh, inshallah, will be good. You'll be good for the mid-year exam, inshallah. All right, so let's start our topic. We were doing threats to biodiversity, which is chapter 16.4 from your textbook. Okay, so let's start with the verse from the Quran, which is related to biodiversity. Uh, so uh, according to this verse from chapter uh, 24, An-Nur, verse 45, Allah states that Allah has created every living creature from water. Okay, and of them are those that move on their bellies and of them are those that walk on two legs and of them are those that walk on four. So Allah creates what he wills. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. Subhanallah, yes, he is. So we also prove this with signs that yes, each and everything is made up of water, be it uh, plants or animals or birds or human beings. All of our body bodies are made up of 70 percent of water. Right. And we also know how vital water is for our lives. And of course, uh, Allah is the creator of all the living creatures on the earth, of the earth uh, and the heavens and the various things on the earth. Subhanallah. OK, so we need to believe in the book of Allah in which everything has been written already, which was real about many, many, many centuries ago. Subhanallah. The objectives for this topic are to study and explain how preserving biodiversity is important for the future of the biosphere and also to explain how loss of habitat eliminates the species. So we were doing this topic in our last lesson. We did this KWL already. So let me ask you questions about the content we covered in the last lesson. OK, ladies, the key concept for this topic is the impact of a growing human population. It threatens the biodiversity. So we were discussing as to uh, how the growing population can have a serious impact on the biodiversity. Right. Uh, we were discussing preserving biodiversity is important for the future of the biosphere, isn't it? So. Uh, OK, so this is what we were discussing about uh, how the biodiversity, what actually is biodiversity and how can we uh, preserve it? Right. So uh, what is biodiversity, ladies? Who's going to tell me what is biodiversity? How do you, how do you define it? Mm hmm. Ladies, who's going to tell me what is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the variety of organisms in an ecosystem, isn't it? We discuss as to the variety of various species which we have on the ecosystem. That is biodiversity. And biodiversity is very, very important for the life on the earth and also important for various things like medicine, technology and uh, uh, the various uh, new technologies which we have today, the advanced technology for all of it. Biodiversity is very, very important. OK, and preserving biodiversity is important to the future of the biosphere. Why? Because the loss of biodiversity can have long term effects like there, there can be a loss of medical and technological advances. They can be an extension of species. As we discussed the other day, there are many, many species of birds and animals which have become extinct already, right? So we need to preserve at least the species which we have today so that they do not get extinct. And our future generations cannot benefit or cannot watch the spectacular species which are uh, created by Allah, subhanAllah. So today, the species which we have, which are on the uh, on the version of extension are, uh, as we discussed the other day, the white tigers, the white rhinos and the various other bird and animal species. Right. Uh, so preserving biodiversity is important because it can uh, help and uh, it can prevent the loss of the ecosystem stability and many human actions that threaten the biodiversity. The loss of habitat and pollution are harming the animal and plant populations around the world. 
isn't it? The rainforests, which are a uh, home for about 60% uh, of the life on the earth, they have the most biodiversity and are the most threatened ecosystems in the world. So preserving rainforest is an important part of preserving the biodiversity of our planet. We also discussed that the loss of habitat are eliminating the species. So due to deforestation or due to cutting down of the forest, many, many species are being eliminated and are also getting extinct. Okay, uh, so let's first watch a video on how the humans are impacting the biodiversities. Okay, so after that, then again, we shall get we shall discuss the rest of the topic inshallah do let me know if the audio is clear once i play it can you hear it clearly ladies yes biodiversity is a variety of life as we saw in this video there are thought to be 8.7 million species on planet earth and as we saw in this video biodiversity is of utmost importance to humans the loss of one key species can have a detrimental impact on many levels, from other species of animals to plants to the physical environment, as shown by wolves. Human activities are reducing biodiversity. Our future depends upon maintaining a good level of biodiversity, and so we need to start taking measures to try and stop the reduction. In this video, we're going to look at how humans are negatively impacting biodiversity. Here are some of the main human-induced threats facing biodiversity. As the world population has grown from 1.5 billion in 1900 to nearly 7.5 billion people today, unsurprisingly the land use has changed. Habitats have been destroyed in favour of agriculture, forestry, fishing, urbanisation and manufacturing. Unsurprisingly, habitat loss has greatly reduced species richness. Habitat fragmentation has also meant that populations have been split into smaller subunits which then, when faced by challenging circumstances, have not been able to adapt and survive. After habitat loss, overharvesting has had a huge effect on biodiversity. Humans historically exploit plant and animal species for short-term profit. If a resource is profitable, we develop more efficient methods of harvesting it, inevitably depleting the resource, as is currently happening with fishing and logging. The exploited species then needs protection. The difficulty is that the demand then outstrips the supply, and so the resource value rises. This increases the incentive to extract the resource and leads to the final collapse of the population. As happened with whales, elephants, spotted cats, cod, tuna, and many more species. Human activities are polluting the air and water. Toxic discharge into water from industrial processes, unsurprisingly, has a negative effect on local aquatic species by killing, weakening, or affecting their ability to reproduce. Another big water pollution problem is eutrophication, which we'll look at in detail in this video. Phosphorus and nitrogen in fertilizers run off agricultural fields and pass into rivers. These surplus nutrients cause algae to bloom, which then starves other aquatic species of oxygen and light, causing them to die. Acid rain is the consequence of humans polluting the air. This causes lakes and water bodies to become more acidic, killing fish, mollusks, amphibians and many other species. A huge impact humans have had on planet Earth is the introduction of alien species to habitats. In fact, it is estimated that on any given day, there are 3,000 species in transit aboard ocean-going vessels. Alien species can cause problems in a number of ways. Pause the video and have a look. Throughout the Earth's history, there have been periods of rapid climate change that have led to mass extinction events. We are currently in a period of fluctuating climate, but nearly all scientists agree that humans' activities like burning fossil fuels are speeding up global warming. We don't know how much climate change is going to affect biodiversity in the future, but it is predicted to be huge. Loss of sea ice and ocean acidification are already causing huge reductions in biodiversity. Climate change alters temperature and weather patterns, with changing patterns of rainfall and drought expected to have significant impacts on biodiversity. So there you have a selection of human-related impacts on biodiversity. There are many more. 
which with a quick search on the internet will bring up. If you want to understand why we should care about maintaining biodiversity, watch this video. All right. Ladies, that was pretty much we were discussing about uh, in our topic also the other day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So in this video, we saw as to how the, the various human activities are causing a threat to the uh, biodiversity. Uh, it had a mention of the eutrophication. Okay. So the video showed in detail about the eutrophication process, which we were discussing in our last lesson, right? And also about how the various things like deforestation and the various oil spills into the water and how the various things done by the humans are impacting the, the biodiversity of the ecosystem. Isn't it, ladies? What did you understand from the video? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you all to participate from now. All right. So this video, which we just now saw, is about how the humans are impacting the ecosystem, isn't it? So one of the threats to the biodiversity is the loss of the habitat and the species they are getting eliminated, isn't it? As the human population is growing, the humans are destroying more and more natural areas. The more the natural resources they are getting depleted, and uh, you can also see how the increase in population is negatively impacting the ecosystem, isn't it? The human activities also, they are, they are forming the barriers such as roads, highways, which prevent the organism from moving between different parts of their habitats. This also we discussed in our last lesson as to uh, whenever we are building the highways like this or whenever we are building the bridges or of course we are doing that in, uh, in order to promote or help the mankind, no doubt. We are doing um, with the increase of the human populations um a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of places are getting destroyed due to urbanization and stuff like that so it's causing it's causing uh, the elimination of some of the species species mm -hmm. yes of course Many of the species are getting extinct and which are the pra human practices which are causing this disruption of the ecosystem, Jenna? You can read out from the slide here the point two. Uh, roads and highways. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. So what what is the solution for this? Do we have to stop building the roads and highways at all or what can we do? So we cannot stop that because that will uh, that will uh, stop our uh, the human development and we will not be able to uh, move ahead or uh, we cannot create ease with the human uh, development, isn't it? So we need roads and highways to move from one place to another. We need to construct the bridges and all, but we need to do in such a way that we are not disturbing the ecosystem a lot. As you can see in this picture, uh, here uh, a highway is built, but of course, can you see this bridge kind of a thing so that we are providing ease even for the animals in order to move from this part of the forest to this forest. Okay, so like that we can build the tunnels, we can build bridges, or we can also make a way for the animals to move along with causing ease to us. Okay, so we need to uh, try and make sure that we are not causing a lot of disruption to the ecosystem. At the same time, we are also uh, getting along with what we need. But along with doing our our own development, we also need to think about the various other living things in the ecosystem as to how this particular plan is is impacting them as well. Okay, so we need to plan accordingly so that we and them, both of the, the, other, the other living things like animals and birds and the humans, all of us are getting benefited at the same time. Okay, so we need to take or we need to plan in such a way that both of this, all the types of species are getting benefited. So we were discussing about this. Thank you so much, Jenna. All right. 
So uh, the human activities like barriers, uh, they are causing barriers to the uh, 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 in between the forest if we are building something. So these barriers, they break habitat into pieces, causing habitat fragmentation. So, so the, the, the various constructions which we are doing, we are trying to break the habitat into many pieces. For example, it is a forest like this and we need to build a highway. We are trying to break the forest. OK, so while doing that, we agree that we need to do it, but we need to do it in such a way that we are not causing a lot of disturbance to the species living in that place. OK, so uh, though we are uh, we need to uh, build bridges and tunnels to connect to the habitats that are separated by the roads so that the organisms can move freely through their habitats so that they are not getting disturbed. OK, so the bottom line is the habitat fragmentation, it prevents an organism from accessing its entire home range. So it occurs when a barrier forms within the habitat or it is often caused by human development. When we are trying to develop something, we are causing, uh, we are breaking down their habitats and we are causing a disruption which needs to be prevented. OK, so what can we do? We need to. Uh, we need to uh, construct habitat corridors, which are a solution to the problem. Corridors can be road overpasses or underpasses, as I just told you. They can be in the form of bridges or tunnels, which allow the species to move between different areas of the habitat. So as you can see in this picture, this type of a plan, it, it, it will help us as well as the animals both because the animals, they can move freely from through these underpasses and overpasses and they can, uh, their habitat will not get fragmented into pieces. E we can provide ease even for the animals, inshallah. Clear ladies, any questions so far? All clear? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. So let's move on to the next subtopic, which is introduced species can disrupt the stable relationships in an ecosystem. OK, what do you mean by this? The native species are the organisms with evolutionary histories in a particular habitat. Right. So the species which are already living in an, in that ecosystem, they are adapted to the various uh, environmental changes in that particular ecosystem, isn't it? So in contrast, if you're introducing any new species to that ecosystem or habitat, what could happen? What might be the result? So an introduced species is any organism that was brought to an ecosystem as the result of the human actions. Uh, for example, as we are talking about the construction of a bridge itself or if we are uh, cutting down the forest and the deforestation is taking place, the human for, uh, for humans for their for their selfish needs, what do we do? We cut down the forest so that we can use that particular area for the construction of industries or companies and all. Similarly, we cut down the trees in order to use the trees for timber so that we need the wood from them. So we need various things. That is why we do the deforestation, isn't it? So when we are cutting down the trees, what will happen to those animals who were living in that forest? Because the forest was a home to many kinds, many species of animals and all those animals will become homeless when we are cutting down those forests, isn't it? So what will happen to those animals? What might happen to them? Ladies? They are forced to move to some other habitat. Isn't it? If it is birds, of course, they can fly away to some other pl place very easily. But especially if you're talking about the animals which live on the trees, on the canopy of the trees, like monkeys and squirrels and various other uh, types of organisms which live on the trees. And similarly, various other animals which live in the forest, like deers, or you can talk about the various herbivores and carnivores. So they have to leave that particular habitat and they have to force uh, forcefully they have to move into other habitats isn't it so this is a result of the human actions because we are cutting down the forest they don't have a home now and they are forced to move into the ha other habitats wherein they are not adapted to those habitats 
isn't it? So these introduced species can disrupt an ecosystem in many ways. So when these new species are being introduced to another habitat, they are moving to the other habitats. They can cause the disruption in, in the other habitats where they are moving. So what are these various uh, disruptions which they can cause to the other ecosystems? The introduced species can prey on the native species and this predation decreases the population of the native species. So as I just told you, there are carnivores like lions and tigers and wolves. So when this forest is being cut down, when they are moving to the other forests or other habitats, they try and uh, they go and prey on the other herbivores which are living in that particular habitat isn't it? So what do they do? They prey and bring down the population of the native species in that particular habitat. For example, there are deers or buffaloes or any type of uh, herbivores like zebras living in the new habitat where they are moving to. So when they are pretty, when they are preying on those the predation, what does it do? It decreases the population of the native species, of the native zebras or deers, for example, were living in that particular habitat. Okay, so that is the first impact of the of uh, these species moving into the new habitat. So these species, which we are, what are we calling them now? We are calling them the introduced species, right? The species which are forcibly moving into the new habitat, they are known as the introduced species. Then the introduced species may not have predators in the habitat where they were introduced. As a result, they may have very large populations. OK, so the second impact is these species which are being introduced may not have predators at all in that habitat. For example, also there are deers moving to the new habitat. So if there are no carnivores in the new habitat where they are moving, there are no wolves or lions or tigers which can uh, hunt them down, then obviously their species will increase. Isn't it? So there will be more of zebras or more of deers in that new habitat if there are no carnivores in order to hunt them down. This is the second impact. The third impact is the introduced species may be better competitors than the native species in a particular niche, pushing the native species out of the niche here. OK, so as we discussed in our previous topics, wherever there are uh, many organisms of the same species living in a habitat, there will be competition in between them, isn't it? They compete for the resources and obviously the best of them will win as we say survival of the fittest, whichever species is most fitting, whichever species is more competitive, uh, that species will dominate that uh, niche, niche meaning the habitat, and the less dominant or the uh, the species which are not so dominant, they have to leave that habitat or they will get extinct. This is the impact. Okay, so sometimes the introduced species can be more dominating. They can dominate over the native species which were already living over there. So when they are dominating the native species, they are pushed out of that niche, they are forcibly uh, taken out and they have to move to the other habitats. Okay, so some species have been introduced because of the irresponsible human activities like the deforestation or the construction of the bridges or the highways, etc. And other species have been introduced by accident as humans travel the globe. Still, other species have been introduced on purpose, but without any idea that the species could cause harm. OK, sometimes also for the uh, the ecologists, what do they do in order to study the uh, behavior patterns of various animals? They try to introduce a new species into a habitat in order to record or study the changes, the impact of that new animal being introduced. The ecologists, they try to introduce and uh, start studying the behavior patterns, all that. So that also can be one of the reasons. So uh, because of the human activities, a new species can be introduced into the other habitats or sometimes it may be because of the natural reasons also because of the forest fires or uh, tornadoes or floods or because of these natural uh, reasons also the uh, the animals what do they do they migrate from one place to other uh, into another place in search of the resources in search of better place to live in 
isn't it ladies so uh, this is what we, we are we discussed just now under the introduced species how can they disrupt the stable relationships in an ecosystem clear ladies any questions about this um, is it clear can someone tell me what what are the introduced species now which species do we call introduced species here yeah who's going to tell me what are introduced species hello bogus can you tell me what are introduced species you can read up from the second point here um so introduced species are like any organism uh yeah that was brought into an to an ecosystem because of like human action so that can be like because um they were making roads or like you know making like yeah anything like to do with cutting down trees or whatever so they have to leave their habitat mm -hmm. and they have to go into new habitat mhm mm yes of yes because yes. they can sometimes be selfish mm -hmm. and not think of others yes very good so what is the impact of these introduced species moving into the new habitats um well it creates chaos because they don't they the like it's like you know you're in a house and if someone new just comes in it's not going to be like you know it's just a stranger it's going to be weird they're not going to know how to re like uh what's it called like interact with each other mm -hmm. like you know they have to like years just to take them to to get used to it yeah to get used yeah. to it and adapt yes. to each other adapt to each other yes that is and about the behavior actually you win the mm -hmm. like um chain of like cuz like if a pre like uh, if a animal comes and it like eats many of the smaller animals then mm -hmm. that can affect like other animals you know what i mean like yes yes the food chain or the food web will be disrupted isn't yeah. it Yes. Yes, very good. Very well explained Halabogus. Uh with the example of the house she mentioned, yes, she can talk about the behavior uh if we are giving an example of humans as to if a stranger if there is a guest moving into the house, there can be many things uh the behavior patterns and how the new person can adjust to the that habitat and also the people who are already living in that house may get affected because of the interaction of this new person. Similarly when we are talking about the habitats we can give example of how the food web and food chains can disrupted can be disrupted and how this uh, if this new uh, introduced species it is a predator species then how they can affect the other uh, prey or the herbivores which are living in that particular ecosystem similarly if this introduced species it is a herbivore and there is there is no carnivore living in that new species then their species will increase in number Okay so these are the various impacts which we discussed about the introduced species. Thank you so much ladies so this is a summary of what we just discussed right now. Introduced species can disrupt the stable relationships in an ecosystem and introduced species is one that is brought to an ecosystem by humans either accidentally or purposefully right? And these invasive species can have an envir uh, environmental and economical impact. Okay, so these new species which have been introduced, you can also call them invasive species, and they, yes, of course, they impact the new habitat or the new ecosystem both environmentally and also economically. Okay, ladies, right now let's move on to the next subtopic, which is effect on the native species. As to how these introduced species can have the effect on the native, meaning the species which have already been living in that ecosystem are given the name native species because they have been living in that ecosystem since many years. Okay, so they are the native species over there. So one of the examples is the Florida Everglades is an ecosystem with plants and animals that have evolved together for tens of thousands of years. so the ecosystem whose example we are discussing over here is florida everglades and this ecosystem consists of both plants and animals which have lived together for many many years okay and a snake as you can see in this picture called the burmese python it is an introduced species in this ecosystem 
Okay, so there are many native species in this uh, Florida Everglades living together since many years. And this is this new species, which is Burmese python, the introduced species, which is being introduced into this Florida Everglades. So the python, what does it do? It preys. It eats small animals and may threaten the endangered species in the Everglades. So of course, these Burmese python has to prey in order to live. So it, it preys on the various other small or organisms or the animals which live like the mice or the other uh, squirrels or the other type of small animals and it may cause uh, threatening or it may threaten the endangered species in the Everglades or the species which are thriving there which are on the verge of extinction. This python can make them get ex go extinct altogether by preying on those species. Isn't it? The snakes are native to southeastern Asia and are sold in the United States as pets. So irresponsible owners have released some of these snakes into the Everglades. So how did these species, these Burmese python get introduced into this Florida Everglades is that uh, they used to put the, uh, this, uh, they used to keep these pythons as pets at homes. You must have known that a few people, they also keep pythons as pets. Okay, so this, these are the famous pets, these snakes in the southeastern Asia, and they were also sold in United States as pets. So the people who used to keep these pythons as pets, what did they do? They irresponsibly, when they didn't want to keep them any more, anymore, they released these snakes into the Florida Everglades. So this is how they were introduced into the Florida Everglades ecosystem. So these introduced species of, uh, of the plants also disrupt the ecosystem. So not only the snakes, also other plants can disrupt the ecosystem. So this is one of the examples of how the uh, python, which has been introduced into this Florida Everglades, has caused the eco uh, disruption of the ecosystem over there. Because uh, there were many plants and animals already living uh, together for thousands of years in that ecosystem. And that particular ecosystem was disrupted because of the interaction of this Burmese python. So this is an example of a snake disrupting the ecosystem. Similarly, we have an example of new plants which are introduced into the ecosystem which can also cause a disruption. But do you think the plants can cause the disruption in the ecosystem, ladies? What do you think? Can plants also have disrupting effects? Because we, as far as we know, plants are always beneficial, isn't it? Wherever we are growing the trees or plants, they help the ecosystem by pro by increasing the oxygen levels. They provide the habitat for various animals and microorganisms which live on them. So according to you, can plants cause a disruption as well? Ladies? Yes. Plants can cause disruption as well. Okay, so uh, we have only one minute left. So let me give you a homework as a research. I want you all to research as to how the plants can cause a disruption of an ecosystem. So I want you to research on the spe that particular species of the plants and how it has caused an is a, a disruption in any type of ecosystem. So I want you to research on this and uh, let me know in uh, the, our next biology lesson. You may present your research. Uh, I know you're overloaded, so you need not make a presentation on anything. You can just research and talk about it. I will give you time to speak about your research in the next class, inshallah. Any doubts or questions so far, ladies? Let me see what we have in the chat. Aya says, sorry, miss, but I have some technical issues and my mic is not working. You're telling me this now, Aya? When did you tell me this? Okay, you told me this at 10.55. Okay, no problem, Aya. If your mic is not working, you can also uh, write on the chat. I also keep checking the chat in between. Okay, thank you so much for informing me anyways. Okay, ladies, any questions so far or any doubts? Miss, what, what, what did you just say about the project or whatever that was? I want you to research about whether plants also can have a disrupting effect on the ecosystem and how can they disrupt the ecosystem.
as we just just discuss about the animal like the python which can cause of course a disruption by eating or preying the other animals in that ecosystem isn't it but can plants also have a disrupting effect on any kind of an ecosystem is what i want you to research with examples got it halabogus um yeah but is this like our final like no 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 it is just a research for the class it is not any project oh. okay just a research so that we can discuss about in our next lesson inshallah all right okay ladies let me quickly summarize today we discussed about how the biodiversity can be preserved and how the loss of habitat eliminates species and also as to how the introduced species can disrupt the stable relationships in an ecosystem okay then uh if you don't have any questions thank you so much please complete your mlg assignments and please submit your research in our next lesson inshallah okay ladies take very good care of yourselves until we meet next time inshallah have a lovely day ahead thank you you're most welcome sweeties